Hi guys, in this video, we are going to look at how to reverse an array in C language and also in C++. So this current challenge is called Array DS, and DS stands for Data Structure. So this challenge is actually very easy, and we're going to do it in the two languages, C and C++. So right now, I'm pulling my example in Notepad. Let's say we have an array like this, 1, 3, 2, 6, 8, 0. What we need to do is reverse that array so that we can have it like this. So they don't expect us to sort the array or have it in um, descending order or ascending order. What we want to do simply is swap the values. So here, one is the first element or the value at index zero. And here in the reverse array, one is in the last position and three in the original array is in second position, but here it's in the second to last position. Two is just before the middle of the array and here it's just after the middle of the array. So the logic here is we need to swap. We need to have some sort of pointer going from the beginning to the end and another pointer going from the end towards the beginning. And we need to swap the values as we iterate through our array. So that's what you see, swap one with zero. So one and zero have swapped positions. That's why you can see zero is here and then one is here. And the same thing applies to three and eight. So eight now occupies the position of three and three occupies the position of eight. And then two and six get swapped to get six and two. So what we need here is to know what is the middle of the array so that when we swap the values and we go from the beginning to the end and also from the end to the beginning, we know when to stop swapping because we can't swap all the way through. Otherwise we might swap some elements twice and we'll get the wrong values. So what we need is a middle variable and the logic has to be the size of the array divided by two. And this has to be an int. So in other words, it's going to be truncated. This is very important because if we have an array with an odd size, right now this array has a size of six, which is an even number. So it's easy to divide it. We can get three from the beginning to the middle and then three from the middle to the end. But let's say we have another element like this and our size is now seven. Then our resulting array, our reverse array will be something like this. So now one will swap with five. 3 will swap with 0, 2 will swap with 8, and then 6 will remain in the same position. You can see that 6 has not changed because 6 is the middle element here. So in this case, 6 will be index 3. And what happens if we divide 7 divided by 2, we get 3.5. But if we truncate that, then we will get 3. And if we look back at the top, 6 is at index 3 because this is index 0, index 1, index 2, index three. So that is how we can get the middle of our array and swap the values appropriately. So now let's jump into the code. This is the C code, not C++. All right. So um, you can switch between C and C++ by dropping down here in hacker rank. So let's look at C first. So two important thing is that we need to return an array. So here, this function returns an int pointer. And the reason why it's an int pointer is because we are going to deal with an int array. And in an array, the name of the array is a pointer to the address of the first element inside that array. So we need to return the array. So that's what you see here, return A, and A is a parameter, which is an int pointer. And uh, we also need to do this assignment here, result count, which is our third parameter here, it's a pointer. So we need to dereference that pointer and store the counts of the array. In other words, the size of the array. So why are we doing that? It is simply because they have asked us to do that. So they have this comment here, please store the size of the integer array to be returned in result count pointer. For example, they give this example here. If we have an int array called A with three elements, one, two, and three, we need to dereference result count, which is a parameter and store the value three because three is the size of that array. And we also need to return the array. So that's what we are doing here. We don't need to ask any questions. It's just how it is. So the logic here that we want to look at is the swapping what we talked about right here. How do we swap and how do we get our middle variable? This is what these uh, five lines of code are doing here or six lines of code. So here we have int middle, it's our variable and I have a count divided by two. A count is a parameter that will correspond to the size of the array that we need to reverse. And then we have this for loop here, which will run from the end of the array all the way to the middle. So I have int i equals a count minus one, minus one because indices in arrays are zero based. If i is greater than or equal to middle, then we want to perform the swapping and then we decrease i at every iteration. So I have this temporary variable here purely for swapping purposes. 
I first store the value at index i inside my array. And then what I do is I swap the value. I change the value. So a count minus i minus 1. Why am I having this logic here? Well, let's look at our example again. So we are starting from the end towards the, the middle right here. So at the first iteration, this is going to be i minus 1. The index will be 6. We want to swap with the index a count minus i minus 1. So let me stretch that a bit. What is a count? A count in this case is the size of the array, which is 7, minus i. i is 6 because we have here index 6, minus 1. So 7 minus 6 is 1, minus 1 is 0. Is that correct? Well, index 6 is 5, index 0 is 1. And indeed, we are swapping 1 with 5. Let's have a second example before we continue with the code. Let's say at the second iteration, we had index 5, which is what will happen. So index 5 will swap with, again, a count minus i minus 1. a count is 7 because we have 7 elements in our array. i is 5 because we had index 5 at the second iteration. Minus 1. So 7 minus 5, this is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we need to swap index 5 and index 1. Is that what happens? 0 is index 5, 3 is index 1. And indeed here, we are swapping 3 with 0. So these two lines here take care of the swapping, and that's why we needed that same variable. You guys can go ahead and try it. I'm now going to run this piece of code and then show you the C++ version. So we passed the test case. There was only a single one. So now I'm going to switch the language here from C to C++. And I already have my code here because I've already tested it. So in C++, it looks a bit cleaner. We only have this header at the top, which we normally use for competitive programming. And we have the namespace std that is fine. But here we are using a vector, which is a dynamic array. I am applying the same logic where I get the middle of my array by calling a.size. So that will give me the size of my vector divided by 2 and I store the results in middle. Then I loop through my vector, but this time around, I'm starting from the beginning. So I have int i equals zero. So we are starting from the beginning. In my example here, I had three as the middle, meaning that index three is the middle, which is correct because it's six. So if we are starting from the beginning, we don't need to hit index three. We only need to process these three ones because we want to swap one, three, and two with eight, zero, and five respectively. We don't need to touch this one here. So that is why I have, if i, is less than middle, then we do the swapping. And at every iteration, I increase the count of i. So swap is a function available in C++. I believe it's under the algorithm header. Inside of swap, I pass in the first value to a i, which would be one, three, and two. And then the second value or the second argument here for the swap function is going to be the value with which to swap it. So in this case, it will be eight, zero, and five respectively as we loop through our array. And that's pretty much it. When we are done, we simply need to return our vector by reference. So let's run this code here again. And we've also passed the test case. So let's submit it just to make sure that we pass all the test cases because there might be some exceptions. So we have nine test cases in all, and we've passed all of them in C++. Let's try with the C language. We are back with our first piece of code, and I'm submitting this now. We've also passed all the nine test cases. So that's it for the array data structure problem solving exercise. If you liked my solution, please make sure you subscribe to my channel to support it. Drop your questions in the comment section. And please don't forget to turn on your notifications. I'll catch you next time. Bye.